internet talking about indi independent women shit. That's yes. a lie. Right. It makes you broke and have nothing. <laughs> I bought two houses by myself. I could have millions of dollars if I was a nice girl with a man being humble. Mm -hmm. We could build a fortune together. together. But I did it all by myself. Which is good too, but I could what you're saying. Bullshit. Yes, yeah. I understand. And all that time I was still having sex, even though I was single. Yeah. Oh. Take it from me. All of us women, I'm 50. Oh, you look really good. Yes, I'm you look really good. Yeah. All of these women, young girls, oh, I'm single. I'm an independent woman. Bullshit. <laughs> keep your marriage, keep your husband. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Let your marriage work for 50 years, 60 years until that was part. Right. Take it from me. I wish I had somebody to tell me, humble yourself, little girl. Mm -hmm. But oh, I'm independent, I have a job, I'm educated, I have my degree, I have my car, I have my house, I bought two houses. You know how much houses I would have bought? 50 if I had a partner. Exactly. Yeah. To build together. To build together. I hear you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Have a good one. She's actually not lying. I've talked to other older women who are pretty, but were beautiful when they were in their 20s and their 30s. And they said the same exact stuff as her. Look, think about it. She's 50 years old and she looks like that. Imagine what she looked like when she was 20 and 30 years old. She's not lying. The issue is a lot of women that's her age are trying to compete with the young women and are not giving advice to the younger women on what's really going on, giving us the situation that we have now, especially with women in our community. Also, on top of that, all the other type of bull crap that we, you know, deal with just just as a people. We all know that women in their 20s, they feel like they got the world in their hands and they have no concept of time, not realizing that that time will pass. And there's no one around her age giving them that type of wisdom, telling them, like, listen, that's the time. You're in your prime as far as beauty. That's the time period where you should be securing a relationship with pretty much a high value man or somebody that you can build with. But instead of telling them that, they tell them men ain't this and men ain't that and go out and have fun, live your life. Don't get tied down to no dude and stuff like that because they're bitter. Like, nah, give them the real. It's a beautiful thing when a woman. Anyway, it's a beautiful thing when a woman does that with a man and builds with a man. It's a scam that's become so normalized that we don't even realize it's a scam anymore. The I'm an independent, strong black woman. I don't need no man narrative is a scam. Here's why. Society has conditioned us to believe that we don't need anybody, we don't need any support, and we can do it all on our own. What a lot of us has accepted as normal is really not normal. Households were created to be two adults and children. The price points that the world is set in now requires two incomes. That's why you're working two jobs. And if we are not working two jobs, we have told ourselves that we have to go back to school, get higher education so we can make more money, which is a necessity. But wouldn't it be better if you had a whole team member helping you along? Because what ends up happening is, yes, love, your career is great. Yes, I am so proud of you for getting your doctorate. I am so proud of you for buying the house. No, I do not believe that women should wait to progress in life until they have a man. That's not what I'm saying. But we are so guarded and we are protecting ourselves so heavily away from every man that we miss on a good man. We automatically assume that all black men are out to get us. And the more you think something, the more you believe something and the more you see something. So we cut off all men who are not making at least six figures. We tell our baby daddies we don't need them because you're not able to pay us a substantial child support. So my kids don't need you. And we don't realize that our black men offer so much more than just their financial provision. They offer protection. They offer guidance. They offer leadership. They offer a masculine energy that absolutely depletes you when you have to provide that. You are created to be feminine. You are created to be the nurturer. You were created to be soft and loving. And we are having to play both roles because we are not allowing any man in out of fear that we're going to get the wrong men. And I understand our concern, but... 
the I'm an independent, strong black woman. I don't need no man narrative is keeping us working way later in life than what we're supposed to. It is keeping us away from the black men who want to protect for uh, protect us and keep us safe. It is keeping us away from the black men that would go to the moon and back to make sure that we're happy and healthy. Make sure our children are happy and healthy. It is taking away the example of manhood that our sons need and the example of how a man is supposed to love a woman that our daughters need. And it is taking away the opportunity for us to rest. That's why our mother struggled for 60 years and now she is exhausted and she's beat down. We deserve so much more. Let's give it to ourselves. She's speaking so many facts. Fellas, let's say you're out on a date. This is really good. There's always this awkward pause that's going to happen where both of you don't talk. You guys don't say anything. What a lot of guys do, and I used to do this back in my day. Me too. You Me try too. starting the conversation again with any topic. You look needy. You look desperate. You say yourself, oh, my God, it's quiet. I, I need to impress her. I need to do something now. You don't have to do anything. Now what I do, if there's that awkward silence or the conversation stops and there's that awkward pause, I let them reignite the conversation while I put my attention elsewhere. And this has worked like a charm. What you're basically implying is you don't impress me, sweetie. So you better come up with something to grab my attention. And every time I have done that where there is that awkward pause or awkward silence, I just look away. I'm not even paying attention to her. I'm drinking my drink, whatever it is, my whiskey. And all of a sudden, they quickly just reignite that convo because they want to pull me right back in. It shows you're not needy. It shows you're comfortable. And it shows that you've been in bad situations like that before. That's actually really, really great advice. But it doesn't just stop at the date. It goes into the relationship as well. See, if you're in a relationship with somebody, let me use my relationship, for example. And I really talk about my wife in this context, but my wife is a very attractive woman, right? Um, when I was trying to get with her and stuff like that, a whole bunch of people were trying. Everybody wanted her because she's just she's just a very attractive woman. You know what I'm saying? And when I first started talking to her, I was I, I'm not gonna lie, I was so I was so amazed of her beauty and I was so happy to talk to her that she was so used to her I told her this before. And I've been we're actually about to celebrate our fourth year anniversary pretty soon. But I told her this, she's so used to being pretty and getting 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 by just based on how pretty she is and how beautiful she is, that she's never had to really try to carry really a conversation or try to put effort into building a relationship with somebody because everybody just likes her because she's just pretty. So when I first started talking to her and stuff like that, she put no effort at all into the conversation. Me being a type of person is very social and stuff like that, and I'm just a very social person, always cracking jokes and things like that. I put tons of effort into having a meaningful conversation with her because I ain't gonna lie. The conversation was so boring, but I was so I was so amazed by her beauty that I was willing to put up with that type of stuff. Now, as we continue to date and stuff like that, I got to a point where, you know, you date somebody for a certain period of time and the less I cared, the more she valued me. That's what I learned in my own marriage, bro. The less I care, the more she, she cares. <laughs> he ain't lying. So I admit to simping for my wife before we were married and stuff like that. I do admit to simping for her. The reason why she continued to go forward in a relationship with, her, with me, I believe, is because I didn't simp all the time. I, I had my moments of simping, but I didn't simp all. Overall, I was more, I was the alpha in the relationship and things like that. And I'll be straight up with her and stuff like that. But there'd be those things I would simp over. And she would pretty much have the power at that time. You know what I'm saying? Like, when you're dealing with a really attractive woman and stuff like that, you can't the best thing to do is to be treat them regular. It's the best thing to do because everyone else doesn't treat them regular. See, when you because they're beautiful. See, when you treat them regular, it sends a signal to them somehow some way this is how they perceive it that you are used to dealing with beautiful women, you're used to dealing with upper echelon people, you're used to dealing with people of high status, high caliber, you have confidence. They look at that as a very strong attribute when you're not like Oh my goodness and stuff. And you really keep your composure and you really not sweating them. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, it just works like that. Now, it's not a 100% success rate because if she's truly not feeling you, she's just not feeling you. Like, honestly, I'm not saying there's nothing you can do about it. But from based on my experience, I don't even, I just don't really, I, I try not to deal with people who aren't truly interested in me anyway. So 
I don't really know what that's like. I'm not about to be chasing no female and stuff like that. She has to see my value and I have to see her value as well. That's how I look at it. Anyway, stay blessed, everybody. Be blessed. I love y'all. You know, hope you love me. <laughs> God bless y'all. All right.